Zeus and the Real Girl is the fifth episode of Gravity Falls second season and 25th overall. In it, Zeus is pressured by his relatives to get a real girl, so he practices on an anime dating sim. But it turns out they're more aware than they seem. Meanwhile, Stan tries stealing an animatronic. Shenanigans ensue. The episode's title is based on a 2007 movie, Lars and the Real Girl, about a kind-hearted young adult who falls in love with an inanimate object. Also kind of like the Greek tale of Pygmalion. The episode begins on a typical average day, and we get our first glimpse of what Zeus does in his spare time. Mostly playing video games. This controller kind of looks like a PS1. We got our first physical look at Reggie, who we first referenced in Fight Fighters, he's Zeus's cousin, and Reggie's getting married. And Zeus's grandma wants Zeus to find someone. I would like to see you settled before I ascend to heaven and live with the angels. And with Grandpa. No, he is not there. So Mabel tries matchmaking at the mall. We can see the agents in the corner here. Zeus references how he was in a pig in Carpe Diem. This store is Build a Beaver, referencing Build a Bear, which is a store you can build your own teddy bear. This stall is Meat Cute, referencing... Meet cute, which is a term you use when you meet someone and it's like love at first sight. This store's overalls are cool now. Referencing, especially at the time this episode aired, overalls went from work clothes to something fashionable and hip, just like they were in the 90s. Beeply Boops, the video games, is a reference to GameStop. Edgy on Purpose is a clear reference to Hot Topic. Because you can buy edgy stuff like Robbie's sweatshirt, as well as pop cultural stuff like a Duck Detective shirt. So, you're probably a girl, right? Wrong? No, I was right the first time. Wrong? We see other games that are referenced in Fight Fighters, but original ones are Fighty Hog, which clearly is just a retextured Waddles, Dr. Punchhead MD, a cutout for Pit Spelunkers, which is clearly. Tomb Raider, but Laura has a grappling hook instead of a gun. And of course, important for this episode, Romance Academy 7! was an obvious play on Japanese anime dating sims. For those who don't know the reference, dating sims are, well, games where you can simulate going on a date with someone in a first-person point of view. And almost all of them include cherry blossoms, bad Japanese to English translations, and schools. The girl we try romancing in this game is Giffany who's played by the same person who plays Tambri. Zeus references is it pronounced Giffany or Jiffany. This is because mostly old people debate on do you pronounce the little animated pictures as Gif or Jif, especially around the time when this episode aired. But as we all know, it's actually pronounced Gif. Jif is a brand of peanut butter and it's spelled with a J. This is the first time we get to see Zeus's room. He's got his keyboard, a decorative plate, Furby, an Optimus Prime, Godzilla, Nintendo 64, a really old desktop, Nort, which we remember from Fight Fighters, is Tron, and this poster of Eddie Chicago as Kick Boss, which is nailed to the wall, is a reference to, of all things, Steven Seagal in Machete. You can even see his katana from the film, which is so weird. Why of all movies and why of all posters of Machete, this one? From another angle, we can also see he's got a Hot Wheel on the shelf, a better look at the Optimus, a very stereotypical Latin American rug, T-Rex poster, I think that's a pony poster. He's got a Stan bobblehead, and on the door there's like a cube that's clearly meant to look like Sonic the Hedgehog, and it says he's got add a cube, because as we all know, Sonic! On the dumpster, you can see one of Rob B's muffin explosions. And on the other side, you see this weird eyeball symbol. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Meanwhile, Stan finds Hoo Ha's Jamboree and wants to steal on the animatronics. It's clearly meant to look like Chuck E. Cheese. And for reasons, Hoo Ha's Jamboree is an example of Alex Hirsch versus censorship. Page 492. It has come to our attention that Hoo Ha is a slang term for vagina. Please revise. It is a proper word meaning excitement or hullabaloo, and that is clearly its meaning here. The context is an owl themed restaurant called Hoo Ha's Jamboree. Not changing it. Some of the kids in the crowd are actually Make a Wish Foundation kids who wanted to be in the show. 
which is really nice. One of the kids tosses their pants on stage. Not nice. Zeus actually finds a girl who's kind of like him. But Giffany is self-aware and doesn't take rejection well. She manages to possess one of the animatronics. And from some absolute cosmic coincidence, this episode aired six months before the release of Five Nights at Freddy's. For like me. <laughs> Was that the bite of 87? Alex Hirsch explains in the commentary for the episode that this is an absolute coincidence. He independently thought of the idea of evil Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. The binary code here, of all things, says Space Jam 2. And this is long before Space Jam A New Legacy was released or even announced. This girl has a Shrek on her shirt. This girl with the red glasses and the rad shirt is clearly a reference to Latula Pyro from Homestuck. But she's got short hair like Terezi Pyrobe from Homestuck. This show's old. And I probably should reference this, but Giffany, especially in her concept art, looks a lot like Monica from Doki Doki Literature Club. It's not a crazy coincidence like FNAF was, being released three years later. But DDLC is still a play on Japanese dating sims, where one of the girls, Monica, is self-aware and falls in love with the player. Not the character, you yourself. But either way, the disc is burned, Giffany is defeated, Zeus gets a girl, his grandma stalks him, and Stan has a weekend in Vegas. This bouncer kind of looks like evil mirror reverse Alex Hirsch. This is like reverse falls Alex Hirsch. No, 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 wait, even worse, this is like if Gravity Falls was picked up by Nickelodeon and he went mad because he had to deal with their BS. Our key is in between these pizza boxes. It's Bureau. Our page is winning hearts by daylight, possessing robots by moonlight. Her emotional baggage is a real fright. She's the one named Giffany. This is a reference to the classic English dubs intro of Sailor Moon from the 90s. Mabel outfit check. She wears this really cute sprinkle sweater and she makes a pink sweater with a you can do it Zeus on it. I like you can tell that she accidentally had one O originally and had a stitch in the other. But I think it would have been funnier if she spelled it Z-E-U-S. Like the god by accident. And a black and white striped referee sweater with a pink hat with a heart on it. This is a really, really good episode. I love seeing more of Zeus and seeing him be happy. Giffany is a fun villain. She's really cute and kind of tragic, but also really scary. I love all the little references in the episode, and honestly, this is probably one of the funniest episodes of Gravity Falls. But there's always been just something about the episode that didn't completely click with me, and I didn't know why for the longest time until I saw the commentary for the episode. Alex Hirsch revealed that in the original ending, Giffany was zapped into another game and got together with Rumble McSkirmish, from Fight Fighters who does make a cameo in the episode. But instead, they went with the Vegas ending. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird and I want people to be happy. And Giffney kind of is a tragic character who just wants to be loved. And maybe I really am in my Tumblr girl era. I don't know, it just seems really Gravity Fallsy for like a character that can only love and a character that can only fight to get together. And I know Giffney's not a good person. She's very cleany and killed people, but... I don't know. And I guess Alex Hirsch also came around to the idea because it has been retconned that Giffney somehow survived and got with Rumble in Journal Number 3, which feels a little like he's just hand-waving it for the fans. But I don't know, I still really like the rest of the episode. 9 out of 10. You can debate me in the comments. Hey Monica. Yes? Is Yuri a raccoon? Yes, she's 100% raccoon. In fact, they're now abundant in this area, so she should take a taxi to the woods to reunite with her kind. Monica! 